Hello, fellow producer. This is Onesto, and today we're talking about five essential ways to use Volume Shaper from Cable Guys. Each tip that you'll learn today are the most common, everyday kind of uses for this incredible plugin. So if you're new to Volume Shaper or Shaperbox or music production, um, get ready to learn a whole lot. All right, let's get to it. All right, so the first essential use of Volume Shaper is using it to get the cleanest, almost invisible sidechain compression ever. All right, I'm gonna play this loop. Uh, there's zero sidechain compression anywhere, so this cake might be a little slowed up. Yeah, no sidechain compression. I'll even still the sub and bass here. Yeah. All right, cool. So what you can do, if you just want a super quick sidechain, just click one of these sidechain preset shapes here. There you go. Cool, you got a sidechain, wonderful. But what Volume Shaper can do is make this sidechain uh, as clean as possible. And we're, I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So what we're first gonna do is address the kick. We're gonna clean up this tail. All right, so as you can hear, the, the kick tail is humongous. It's really boomy, it's huge. Maybe you want that, cool, but I don't in this case. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just make sure my length is at a quarter. My MIDI trigger is on uh, one shot. And then I'm gonna choose one of these trim preset shapes down here. And then I'll finagle it later. All right, so it's sounding much cleaner compared to this. Great, but maybe it's a little bit too short. So I'm just gonna increase this like that. Cool. I'm happy with that. So once I'm happy with my kick tail, what I'm gonna do is copy this, the volume shaper plugin from my kick layer, go to my sub and bass layer and cop and, and paste it there. So now we have, um, this is from the kick. Now what we're gonna do is right click, then hit flip vertical. So now we have this inverse shape from the kick layer. So let me compare the two. Nice. Uh, move this like right node all the way to the right and this left node a tiny bit to the right. It's just gonna allow the, the sub bass actually come through. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play now and it should be super clean. Yeah, that's really, really clean and that's it's like perfect. All right, so for the second essential uh, tip, I'm gonna show you the three uh, parameters that I automate the most. And those three parameters are automating uh, the rate, automating the shape, and something called LFO Smooth. So for this example, I'm gonna be using this pad layer, which you already have that side chain going on. Cool. So what I wanna do is apply an additional LFO shape to it. All right, so I'm just gonna choose this preset shape right here. All right, cool. I like that rhythm. But what I'm gonna be doing is allowing uh, the DAW to write in some automation. I'm gonna be switching back and forth here in the link. And let's just see what happens. So here we go. We'll start off at one half and we'll play it. All right, cool, that's uh, pretty fun. Another way to get even more movement and excitement is by flipping between these different shapes or shapes that you create on your own. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna be using these uh, slots right here. So if you click one, it takes whatever shape is in this graph and places it, places it down here in this like bank of shapes. So now I'm gonna pick another one. Let me listen to it. Maybe. Maybe. All right, let's use this one. So I like this one as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this. So now we have, we can flip between these two at a moment's notice. And once again, I'm gonna have the automation right in and we'll just give it a shot. Here we go. All right. So now I'll play it again. You'll see all this automation happening. All right, so hopefully your brain is already getting inspired of what you can be doing with this thing. But there's one more thing I want to show you that I love to automate, which is this LFO Smooth. 
So I'm gonna be adjusting it. And what you'll be seeing is that instead of these sharp points and edges, they're gonna become more rounded. They're, they're gonna smooth out. Yeah, here how it's much more smooth, bouncy compared to something more sharp and staccato like that. And you have to push this pretty high, like almost around like 70 to really start to hear it is what I've found. So I'm going to automate that in once again as we listen to it. Here we go. Cool. And you can see that when you push LFO smooth almost like 100%, it sort of becomes like too smooth. It's almost like one like volume level instead of having all these peaks and valleys. So let's hear it again. All right, so this third essential use um, is quickly becoming one of my favorite ways to use Volume Shaper. It's take it, we're gonna take a step back and look at side chain compression again, look at ducking, and we're gonna use this vocal chop as our example. This vocal is it's just such a heavy pumping. Even when I'm reducing the mix, even when I reduce this mix slider, it's just still not doing it for me. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna make use of our multi-band uh, feature right here, which is going to be perfect for it. So what I did was I made sure that our shape here is in our bank because now I'm going to click the low and see how it's just a flat line. There's no shape. So we can just click this. Boom. Now it's there. We keep putting the same shape all across all the frequency bands. And I'm just going to like roughly put them around here for now. We'll, we'll finesse it later. And what we'll be doing is that in the low, mid and high, we're going to have different mix amounts. So in the low band, we're gonna have uh, quite a bit because the kick, that's where the kick likes to live right there. So we'll try it at 80%. Mid, we're gonna go a bit less because we want more of the vocals to come through. And the highs, we're gonna go even less here. So it goes from heaviest side chain to lightest side chain, so low, mid, high. So now let's listen to it. Yes, right now it sounds a, a whole lot more uh, smooth, um, better even. So, uh, and let's say when you're like adjusting these these bands, it's you know what do you know? Like just looking at the things, like I don't know where like what's what sound is coming to the lows. So what you can do is click this solo button, the band solo, and now you can hear just what's happening in this frequency band. So I'm just gonna increase it right here. Great. Now we'll solo the mids. Uh, a little more, and the highs. All right. Yeah, I think that sounds so much more smooth. Yeah, that's so much better. I love this tip so much. And before I go on to the next tip, um, if this video is low key blowing your mind, please let me know by liking this video. And if there's any volume shaper tips or shaper box tips that I just did not touch on that you feel are really important, let every other fellow producer know by writing it in the comments below. All right, and then the fifth most essential use is uh, to spice up your transitions. So when you have a sweep or, or some kind of reverse, if it feels static, uh, it, it gets a little bit less exciting and adding movement to it is really easy to do with Volume Shaper. So here's our riser example here. Yeah, so it's really basic, um, but it, it should have movement. It should be a bit more exciting. I'll make it a little bit louder too, because I found a little too quiet for this. All right, cool. Now you can really hear it. All right, so I'm just gonna choose one of these shapes here. I'm gonna choose this one right here. And then now I'm gonna just kind of imagine what I want to happen. And what I want to happen is that at near the end of the riser, I, that's where I want a lot of this volume automation to happen. At the beginning, I kind of wanted to, we can use like some rising. I don't want it to ever go to like negative infinity. We don't want that. But we want it to sort of have, feel like it's moving up and down. And one, one handy thing to do is just click this magnet and now it's going to be snapping uh, on the grid here. And as you're drawing, these little nodes, if you right click them, it changes 
what they're doing. So when it's like this hollow circle, that's where you get curves. Right click it. Now it's like a smooth point. Right click it again. Then it's a sharper point. All right, let's give that a shot. What nail is here? It might not be good, might be. All right, sounds all right. Let me just adjust it a little bit. All right, so that's, that's a, a lot better. This is what without any of that volume shaper. All right, and then with it. Okay, so let's listen to our loop after all of those shaper box changes in here and let's listen to our results. And with that, those are our five most common and essential ways to use Volume Shaper. If you're interested in this plugin, just click the link in the description below. Uh, I hope I can see you again in the future. Later.